I'm sorry, but Chris Clenshaw's reign so far hasn't been as good as everyone seems to think. Especially after yesterday. I mean, what the fuck was that? This is obviously the Whitney episode that Piggy hasn't seen just yet. Um, but I've seen, and it's okay, but it's not, it's not fantastic, I do agree. Downvote me all you want, though I would prefer a friendly debate if people disagree. I'm entitled to my opinion, or a rant, and here it is. I thought most of 2023 was brilliant. Me and my fiancé got back into it regularly last year, and we really enjoyed the build-up to Sorry, Christmas. you're not married. <laughs> For you're each of the six's own stories. And we had a blast trying to guess the Christmas body. We also loved Cindy's return, even though we still see her as Stella Price of Corey. The six stories sounded absolutely mint on paper, but the execution was just awful after the 22nd December. And yeah, that includes Christmas Day. What a disappointment, in my opinion. Yeah, that's, that's your opinion and your opinion only, motherfucker. Christmas Day is one of my, probably my favourite Christmas Day of all time. Um, let me explain why The Six has disappointed me so far. For ten months, we were led to think he's dead. Nish was actually dead. But he didn't even die in the end. And just weeks after The Six came together, they became the five when Sharon left. What a cop out. Of <laughs> and now Denise has been sectioned. That's the four till she returns. Of course, that's defo not my main complaint, my main concern. They haven't thought any of this story through at all. It's gonna drag on till the 40th birthday next February, but I'm already fucking fed up of it. And if that wasn't bad enough, they have probably ruined all of these women forever. Just for this stupid story. Rocky has been sacrificed to save them, which annoys me because I actually like him more than any of these women. I couldn't care less if they all go to jail. At this point, they deserve it. What they're doing is pure evil. They're lying to Keanu's family to cover their own backs. It's sociopathic. They literally have no empathy. After all, not like Linda becoming an out, like falling off the wagon and drinking again because you can't handle the guilt. Or <laughs> everybody feeling bad about Denise. Or Kathy fucking losing her husband because she had to set him up to go to jail. Uh, yeah, but no, no, no empathy or guilt whatsoever. No remorse. <laughs> this storyline has ruined Linda. I actually hate her character now, as she has had a personality transplant. She's not battling her guilt. If she felt guilty, she would have told Karen and Bernie the truth when she had the chance. Though Linda hasn't been that good, really since she, really since she was raped by Dean a decade ago now. Her whole character is defined by her rape, and now the fact that she's a murderer. That's a lot to unpick there, motherfucker. I don't know what I don't know what the uh, one taking this tone. Uh, uh, just just want to chime in. Some some quirks I have. Uh, first of all, he pointed out that we all knew his niche for ten months. We did not. We did not see his face. We no. did not see his hand. We we saw a white hand, yes, but we. But you that look at Sharon's. a white hand. And, it was Sharon's. Because you look at a hand, you know I me. Mean? Like, like you know. Obviously, you can tell if you see my left hand, you can go right. That's Piggy. But if you're going off, like somewhat of this hand, you and you pick it up, you're not immediately going, "Oh fuck me, that's Piggy on the floor." No, it's a generic hand, you fuckers. And second of all, uh, I didn't know someone getting raped uh, and then you know being traumatized by it is called defining their character. I mean, how would you like it if your fiancé got raped? What, are you going to say she's defined by her character? Like, fuck me, it's not fucking Cinderella or something. Oh, I was raped and I must be defined by my character now. Fuck off. You twat. Yeah, it's, uh, it's people like... Look. Linda's rape is a big part of her character. It's the trauma. It's the fucking trauma she faced. Linda was... A fucking absolute nuisance, an absolute cow the whole time. And then, obviously, Dean sexually assaulted her. And this changed her life. This is trauma. 
It's a horrific event to happen to anybody. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't then the biggest part of her character the entire time. You know, there was a big deal. It's an important formative storyline for the character that made a lot, of, I say, it made a lot of people like her. I don't know, didn't watch her at the time. Can't tell. But I don't think that, and obviously, why, why is it suddenly a big thing? Because fucking Dean's back. That's why it's a big part. Because he's back. No one should have to face someone who did something absolutely fucking horrific to someone. And finally, yeah, she's had a personality transplant. She's murdered someone. She's murdered someone. And she's, like, fallen off the wagon. I'm sorry. <laughs> and let's be honest, Linda, Linda hasn't been ruined since fucking... Linda had a personality transplant last year because Elaine came in and then she became likable. Not fucking because... I just... The timeline of events on this is just... Here's when I think it changed. It's not true, though. It's just not true. Um... <laughs> like, like, how idiotic do you have to be? Because, like, let's be honest, uh, and I'm sorry to use the R word, but if you're being raped, like, that is going to fuck you up. Um, anyone who's dealt with any form of sexual harassment or abuse, it's one of the most fucking, I mean, to, to like, a, uh, off, someone off to the side, just sickening, you know, fucking horrific. The amount of trauma it can fucking do. It can entirely reshape your life. It can knock you back entirely. It can just make you a shell of who you used to be. It's it's terrible. So it's not like a... I think Linda should just grow up. It's, it's not the case. It's a fucking horrific thing. And so is murdering someone, which she's still feeling bad about. But yeah, let's move this on forward, though. Jack and Stacy, I actually thought would make a good couple. Him and Denise are dead in the water anyway. I think they're well suited and have nice chemistry, but I don't like the fact they've had them have an affair. Seriously, I would like them to break up Denise and Jack and put them with Stacy properly, which they have no intention of doing. Well, yeah, it's not as easy as just fucking breaking up your life. At what point in time is Jack going to be able to have a serious talk with Denise in her current state of mind saying, I want a divorce. Like, sh sh she's having a mental breakdown. She's not going to do that. Like, uh, people always talk about how sometimes the affairs are more fun than the actual relationship. I feel like it's arguably true in this instance. But, like, wh when? when is, when's Jack going to sit down with Denise and say, I want to split up? He can't. Because he's got fucking kids. He's got family there. He can't just uproot her, his entire life just because he's found interest in Stacy. But this isn't like a fucking storyline like quirk. It's just how it is. It's not them intentionally saying, well, we could put Jack and Stacy together. It's like, no, the amount of damage that would be done if they split up. That's why they're not doing it. You fucking idiot. Um, Kat and Nish. That was so fucking random. Kind of like they chucked in two names in a hat and they came out. Now that Cat hates him too, though, that's yet another suspect if they do a Nish who done it, which I hope they do. It's high time Nish was killed off, in my opinion. No, not now. There's still more to go. It's like everybody was saying how... It's like how at Christmas everybody was saying Nish and... We kind of went, no, nah, no, nah, we don't want Nish to die, though. Like, if you kill Nish now, there's so much storyline that you could still do. Um, and you, like I said, it's been fucking great to see Nish try scheme. And, like, the cat and Nish make sense. It's Cat. Cat doesn't like to be alone. Cat got knocked back by Phil. She got knocked back by Alfie. And then out of spite, she decided, fuck you, Phil. Ah, oh, hello, Nish. Nish, you seem lovely, and everybody's telling her, don't go in there, she's a piece of shit, and he fucking ruined my life. Oh, Nish, you're fucking lovely. Like, it's just another example of Kat just being a fucking idiot when it comes to men. 
And like, yeah, sure, I didn't necessarily like it as at the time, but it still served its purpose. This was another piece of Nish's destruction. He got too cocky, he got too fucking complacent, and he tried to con someone, but she's got fucking family. Um, and it's, yeah. The, the Denzel storyline is just annoying. I don't need to be reminded that when boys and men go to the gym, they can become obsessed with it. I have the same problem with my fiancé. He's obsessed with his size. Sad face, sad face. Yep, yeah, now you're just projecting. Uh, you're just projecting. I don't like it, cause, not because of how it's being done, but because I'm affected by it because of my partner. Like, talk to your partner. Stop fucking hating on Denzel. It's not his fault. <laughs> it's not his fault. Denzel is a teenager. Even, then, even, even Denzel is a teenager, so like a bully and a teenager. How can you? How can you, pal? <laughs> I like that. returns, but I don't understand why they brought back Lauren and Penny. If it was just to rebuild the Brannins, then they would have been better going off, off with Max. Way more storyline potential there. Not like... There's not storyline potential on the, on the square. <laughs> I want storylines that I'm not going to see. Why? <laughs> um, all Lauren has done since coming back to the square has been getting to know her little sister Annie and Peter and raising Louie and her developing, like, kind of basically sisterhood with Penny. <laughs> you can't... <laughs> and besides... When they were in France, Penny has done nothing since reuniting with her dad, Jack. Yeah. I mean, you're not wrong. I, you, you, can, you can have that one. But ultimately, there's only so much time on the show. Only so many characters can get featured. They're not just going to get fucking forgotten. Like, there's, there's... You know, we've already seen where the stories can go from here. They've just not done it yet. And <laughs> I, I think I, I think I've realised, mate. I've now realised with this next point, this is actually your alt account. I've, 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 I've fucking, I've rattled you, mate. The only good thing about the show at the minute is the fact that Mo is coming back. I love Mo. <laughs> and the George storyline. I don't know if that has ended now. George is a great character. Mo is always welcome. Why is Mo your favourite character? Mo's shit. Hey. You shut your fucking mouth. You shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> like, I I, res I appreciate the comic relief. I appreciate what she can do. But, like... Yeah, I love Big Mo. Uh, yeah, all right. Great. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Big Mo is lovely. Big Mo I, is I cuddly. like Big Mo, and I, I'm, I'm going to be happy to see her back with new writers actually make her do stuff, but, like, how long's it gonna be till she just fucks about and does nothing? Her first scene in, she'll be doing nothing. Yeah, exactly, like, fucking... <laughs> but what do you mean that's the only good thing about the show? It's not! There's so much good stuff going on! The George stuff! Like you said, the George stuff, fantastic! Some of the best family-based EastEnders they've done in a long time. The aftermath of the six, the new Johnny Carter with a fucking personality. Even the Dean stuff as fucked up as it may be. Absolutely fucked. Still interesting. Fucking the George, Cindy, Elaine triangle still happening, still going on. <laughs> Even the Whitney stuff, which most people aren't liking right now. It's still good stuff. It's still interesting stuff. It's still Whitney finally being raised to that level that she should have been, but has never been allowed to be. Because she always just went, ah, oh, you're not happy? Stab. It's... Cheers, lads. Cheers for that. Like, just because it's not how you... It's like, it's like me with wrestling. Well, I, I realized that when I wasn't so much a wrestling fan, I was getting upset at things that I, that I would have done differently. But that just that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means I have a different opinion about it. Doesn't mean it's bad because it's not the way I wanted it to happen. But because it wasn't the way I wanted it to happen, I didn't give it a fucking chance to actually happen and enjoy it. Like, that's not the way to enjoy these fucking shows. Have your theories, but still actually see how it plays out. Because that's the whole fucking point of a soap. 
it builds through time. We're building up to another fucking sequence. Like, what about the Denise mental health stuff? Fantastic. Amazing. Really good. But no, it's all bad. It's, everything's bad. It's all garbage. I hate that Dean is still around, still walking free like he's done nothing wrong, and still denying he didn't rape Linda or Roxy. Weirdly, I think they want to redeem him, but that is impossible, because now look at what he's doing to his own daughter. He just gets more and more evil, and I fucking hate him. Why the fuck is he still around? I feel like Dean has outstayed his welcome now. Uh, yeah, but you you got to know, he's not going to get redeemed. <laughs> the point is... He's not just going to walk scot-free. He's going to face fucking justice for his actions at some point. Why, why would they have made it so agonizing if he wasn't actually going to get his comeuppance? Dean's going to fall at some point. He's going to fucking fully go face in the dirt as he's doing horrific things, and he's done horrific things. So he's going to see some form of justice, no matter what it is. Because he can't, like, he can't keep going on like this. Someone's gonna find out and fucking sort him out. Um, like, it's agonizing now, but eventually, it'll fucking, we'll, we'll get the payoff, is the point. Get angry now, but later on, when he finally gets his fucking, like, when he finally gets what he deserves, It'll feel good, and it'll be really fucking cool, and be like, "Yeah, fuck you, Dean." <sighs> um, fuck you now. I'm hoping and praying for a who killed Nish. Who done it is on the way. It might spice up the show again. No. Oh my god, you're a fucking idiot. You're a fucking idiot. There is a who done it. There's a who <laughs> killed Keanu. But we know it's Keanu. It's like you're in Looney Tunes, where you know what's going to happen to the Roadrunner, but you, but you laugh at Wiley Coyote because you know Wiley Coyote is fucked. It's the exact same premise because we know what happened to Keanu, but no one on the square except for the six women and Johnny, uh, and Jack kind of and Nish kind of don't know what happened to Keanu. They know what happened to Keanu, and no one else does. There is a who done it. You're just not opening your mind to it. You're an idiot. <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. And I don't like saying you're an idiot, but you are an idiot. You're giving out all these points, but none of them are valid, because you, you, you're you spewing shite. You're spewing nothing it's but just, shite. He, I don't like it. Why? Because I don't like it. It's like, yeah, but... It's ah man, just no. Then I know who done it isn't the way we did a we did a who done it. It was good, except that it was good, and move on to the aftermath of the who done it. Because look, everybody wants to see who done it. Nobody wants to see the aftermath. Whoa, it was Linda. Whoa, that's big. Oh, I'm tired now. Yeah, yeah, but it's only just started though. Yeah, but I'm tired. Yeah, but you always knew this was going to be a long running thing. I don't like it no more. Yeah, well, what about the last three months? You've been fucking glazing. Just, uh, give me that fucking who done it? Who killed him? Uh, give it to me, please. I'm glazing. Uh, fucking just... <laughs> it happened. Now we're seeing the aftermath. Watch the aftermath. Make up your fucking mind. Uh, yeah. I thought when Ravi kicked him out the other night... He was going to have a heart attack. That would have been satisfying to see because I just hate him. Kudos to the actor, though. Look, no, the storyline shouldn't be decided on your feelings. I, If it was up to me, I wouldn't have had Keanu back. I wouldn't have had him back because he's fucking boring. But because he got brought back, made a part of the sixth storyline, did this thing, became a bit of a baddie, got killed off. Biggest thing the character's ever going to do. And the uh, most impactful storyline he's ever going to be involved in. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but they want Nish to reveal it all that the Six did it, I believe. They want Nish to combat it. Don't they? Um, 
I don't think so. All right, they sorry, just, so they just want Nish dead. Oh, uh, but why? Why? Like he's a car. It makes no sense. Dean, sure, but what has Nish really done in comparison to Dean? Domestic abuser. Uh, Manipulate his Ah, yeah, but that's just that's just a normal Tuesday over here, lad. Right. Uh, uh, he has done some really fucked up things. Yeah, but it's Nish. He has, Why would he you has want been, to kill him off? He has been evil. Yeah, but, but everyone loves an evil bad boy. That's why Alfie Moon is so loved. Everyone loves an evil bad boy. No. The bottom line, in my opinion, the wheels have really come off since Christmas, so I don't think EastEnders was ever actually in a Renaissance era like I thought it was last year. It just so happens they had some good main storyline ideas, like The Six and Cindy's Return, but the execution was hit and miss. Miss for the six, hit for Cindy. That's a hot take, mother... Mate, nobody... Li- People think like the Cindy stuff. They brought back Cindy and they got fucking hate Ian. Ian's fucking shit. I don't like Gina and Anna. People think Gina and Anna are shit. People hate George and Cindy. They're teasing it back and forth. Why is that a hit and the six is a miss? People are saying yesterday was boring, and I agree. I like Whitney. I think she's a likable and good character. But yesterday was just weird. Uh, I'll put this as a spoiler. Uh, but this whole week is about Whitney and Zach. It's not just one episode. And spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Whitney isn't even leaving yet, I don't think. So why is this week focused on her and Zach? She is leaving, though. She is leaving soon. This is her end. This is how she ends. He's fucking off the Milton Keys and he's staying there. My only problem with Whitney's return, uh, Whitney and Bianca's return, is the fact I didn't get my boy back. I didn't get him back. I didn't get Morgan. Where the fuck was Morgan? Or Terry. Fuck you. Why well, bring back Terry? Fuck's sake. Um, but, but I can't wait to watch this week's episode. This is coming out next week. Yeah. Um, probably. So, I mean, uh, just I'm going to... I understand why people are upset by them, but I still think they're still interesting enough. It's just, you have to kind of take some of the smooth with the rough, as Whitney's not really been that big a character in years. So now she's actually getting that chance to be the big main character. And it's okay, but it is still Whitney, and look, everybody's tired of her at this point. Um, So, yeah, it's, I don't know. I can see why people are upset, but yeah. And they finally go, seriously, when you look at the state of 2024 so far, Chris Clenshaw really isn't that at all. It just so happens he was better than Prass producers. <laughs> That's your whole problem. He's not that good. He's just better than a lot of them. What the fuck does that make him then? What does that make him? If he's, not, if he's better than the previous ones, is he better than the previous ones? Yes. He's not some fucking pariah ushering... I, mean, I believe... I, mean, well, I don't believe he is. That's fucking hyperbole. But he is... He has moulded the show into a much more engaging place over the last year. And I feel that's undisputed. Whether you dislike some of the ways the storylines have gone, sure, it makes sense. It's fair enough. But... Like, and this is, you're putting at odds to an opinion that you apparently also hold. Who's saying that Chris Clenshaw's a fucking pariah? Some people are, sure. That's because people are enjoying the show right now. But it's your brain that's made this fucking distinction that Chris Clenshaw's better than everyone else. But he's not as good as the other ones that I didn't mention. Or critique. <laughs> It's like it's like when the fat boy Stan account was like he didn't have all the fans, but he did have a lot of them. It's like, yeah, what what metric is that? What metric? C- can we wait this now? For every three fat boy Stan accounts, there's one fucking reasonable sound individual who doesn't want him back. Like, what fucking met? What units are we using? Give me some fucking digits. Go through all the producers. Tell me who was good and bad, and then we can actually see whether you're just biased and nostalgic. Or just a fucking hater. 
And you know, some of them yeah. are fine. Some of them are fine. You're you're allowed to fucking you <laughs> you're allowed to have some fucking issues with how the show's going. Would would I give some other storyline well some of other characters more storylines? Yes. But you can't just give your favourite characters all the main storyline. It's why Ben's getting fucking axed. Because everybody's fucking sick of him stinking up the show with his seventeenth storyline of the year. <laughs> and Whitney is going because they no longer gave her every single storyline and a big emotional number and a way for her to sing somehow. Like, <laughs> because they're just fucking sick of it. Um, and you know, Sharon left. Yeah, Sharon left, but that's because she fucking. That's because there was already a break needed. I don't think it's unreasonable for her to say, "Oh, I'm leaving. I'm gonna go see Michelle, who's struggling." That's reasonable. That's reasonable, is it? Fucking think it yeah. is. Oh. But let's see, there's only like one or two comments, so we can go through some of that, saying. Once someone says, I'm not saying I don't have a few concerns, but it's so much better than the Sen era. Aside from the Gene storyline, the majority of that era was really bad. The attempted murder of Ian Beale was a particular low light. The main issue with the six is that I'm worried of how it'll end. The 20th anniversary storylines currently airing on drama had all three characters involved in Den's death leave for a year. Two have never appeared again. I don't want it to happen to these characters. But I also don't want it to be swept under the carpet like they had to do when Ian returned due to the ridiculous of that storyline. I thought the build-up to Christmas was a bit much. There were too many horrible characters to accommodate. The, the Who's Been Murdered storyline could have done without a Dina return, really. His last fan exit was fine as it was. He's surely not a long-term character. He'll accidentally kill his daughter due to the pill thing and will leave shortly after, probably. Having said that, I'm enjoying the week. It's a nice change of pace. I'm okay with the Denzel storyline and there's surely much more to come from Penny and Lauren. Well, I hope. See, that's a bit more reasonable. That's actually someone who's seeing the show for what it is, what the good parts are, what the bad. Not just their fucking brain telling them what's good and bad. Someone says putting Jack and Stacey together as a normal couple wouldn't last a week. True. Um. Fucking hell. No, I'm not even giving that, that other comment the fucking time of day. I've had enough of this. Go on, read it. Some, it's just the original poster commenting again. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I agree with some of your points. Felt the character's been ruined. Some of the reasons Kathy the most. All Lauren's done, done is babysit the kids. However, I, I think Rocky drew left due to contractual issues. The said, that said, I think it's time to sort it out. Surprise still, but yesterday it was so confusing. An off script for a normal episode. It should have been a special something. They were confused because of a, they were confused because of the time lapse. Yeah, I all think they've uh-huh. been ruined. To be honest, I think I focus more on Linda than the other ones, though, because she was the killer. Stacy is the only one who might deserve to escape from this unscathed because she didn't even want to be involved. Yes, she did. Trudy did it to save her own neck, knowing they would drag her into it. Otherwise, if they said they wouldn't mention her name, I really think Stacy would have walked away and moved on with her life. It's the same without Kathy, but I hope she goes down because it's unforgivable that she agreed to frame her own husband. I don't like Kathy, though. I never have. <laughs> Uh, I, I just want to chime in. Do you know why he <laughs> said that Monday Tuesday's episodes weren't special episodes? Yeah. Uh, they were. Yeah, because they were. Because they focused on Whitney. Like, it, was an, uh, I, it was an on-location shoot. <laughs> well, maybe not, they, like, technically, but it's, a, it's, it's in fucking Milton Keynes. Yeah. No, Now, I understand it's not a special because Terry wasn't there, but it, it is a special because it focuses on Whitney over the course of five weeks. So I don't know how to define special for you, you fucker, but uh, I believe that was a special. I believe EastEnders posted everywhere saying it is a special. Yeah, two Whitney, part special. Whitney's, getting two ep- Whitney's getting the episodes. It's like five weeks all jammed into one. That was the angle. Yep. That was the angle for it. Um... <laughs> I still just I, I like it when someone's real intentions are exposed though. I feel like Kathy's been the worst don't like and ever have. <laughs> never never liked her. Yeah, okay. Like you're you're not unbiased then, are you? Like <laughs> Well, I I've just gotta say, I think I think Chris Clenshaw's really just 
are just a big piece of shit, and why? Why do you dislike him? I just never liked him, and I think his East Enders is bad. Okay, she is. Um, doo -doo -doo. to be fair, I don't like Kathy. Don't ever have. I would found her unlikable in this stint. No, not really noticing a difference in her. Denise was poorly at the minute, but she's the one who threatened to get more than shit in the purse in the first place. She, she deserves punishment. She, it's, look, she attacked Nish. Someone had to. <laughs> Sharon decided to flee, which is super sus. She should have been punished too. Suki, I'm not really sure about the character. It's in her character's behavior like this. She was really evil when she first arrived. That's fair enough if Rocky chose to leave because of that. I thought he was an axe to save the woman. Glad I'm wrong. See, they don't, they're not even, they're not even fucking, they just believe in what they want to believe. That Rocky was axed because of the six. No, he, he left because he wanted to leave. You melt. Um. Yeah, Lauren's has been pointed so far. I agree about yesterday, but that's going to be happening all week. This week's just special ups at Whitney and Zach. So fucking boring. Just stop watching, please. Please, it will make our job easier if you just fucking stop watching the show. Or don't, because you, you've so far given us 50 quid, and I appreciate that. So thank you. Um, But my, my thought <laughs> is uh, grow up. <laughs> Get a life. Fuck off. Ah, bit much, mate. <laughs> bit much. Sorry. <laughs> just Sorry. a re just a Reddit thread. It's not it's not like that. Not like they're campaigning for something. It's just a Reddit thread. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No. You're fine, redditor. It's just look. If you're not enjoying it, don't fucking watch it. Okay. Just, just stop watching it. If you hate it so much, stop it. You'll be happier for it. It's not what you were. It's not what you thought the show was gonna be, and that's fine because the show's not what what I thought it was gonna be. It's not what Piggy thought the show was gonna be. But for fuck's sake, stop making all these grand fucking terms like Chris Clenshaw's fucking shit. Oh, the show's terrible. It was gonna be in a Renaissance period. And then they fucked it up because, like, you're entitled to a rant while we're entitled to our opinion. I don't share Piggy's opinion. <laughs> it's Piggy's opinion's a bit fucking OTT, a bit much. Uh, but we have had to sit here for 34 minutes and go through your shit opinion. So, if you, if, if you're entitled to your opinion, we're entitled to your opinion, and your opinion shit. <laughs> so. Do you, the viewer, think that Chris Clenshaw has been bad? Do you think he's been good or bad for the show? Tell us in the comment section down below. Remember to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe. And as always, we have a Discord where you can join the conversation, a Patreon, coffee, and a YouTube membership so you can support us monthly or one time. And finally, a wrestling channel, one more match. If you want to see a slightly more unhinged, slightly more off the fucking rails version of this, uh, go over to one more match. 182. All of the links are in the description if you're going to go there. But as always, thank you for watching. Make sure to join us in the next one. Bye bye.